it just depends on where the storm makes landfall, what the winds do, how well the levees hold up. Um, there are just a lot of factors, and, and so our job, unfortunately, is to plan for the worst case scenario. We believe that the levees in Jefferson Parish, with the tidal surge that is presently forecast, will be topped. Early in the morning on August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf Coast of the United States. When the storm made landfall, it had a Category 3 rating. The storm itself did a great deal of damage, but its aftermath was catastrophic. Our, our Gulf Coast is getting hit and hit hard. I want the folks there on the Gulf Coast to know that the federal government is prepared to help you when the storm passes. There were over 50 failures of the levees and the flood walls that protected New Orleans and its suburbs. The levee and flood wall failures caused flooding in 80% of New Orleans and all of St. Bernard Parish. Over the course of the 20th century, the Army Corps of Engineers had built a system of levees and seawalls to keep the city from flooding. The average elevation of New Orleans is about six feet below sea level, and it is completely surrounded by water. A staggering blow. Hurricane Katrina leaves behind a vicious trail of destruction. Dozens fear dead, thousands homeless, more than a million without power. The federal, state, and local governments are working side by side to do all we can. The number of people taking shelter in the Superdome rose to around 20,000. The roof of the Superdome was peeled off. Daylight could be seen from inside the dome, and rain was pouring in. With no power, and no water, the sanitary conditions within the Superdome rapidly deteriorated. People began showing up here on Tuesday when they heard that there would be food, water, and buses to take them away. But there is no lifeline, and many honestly believe this is where they will die. Look how hot he is. He's not waking up very easy. Some have already died waiting to be saved. The engineers responsible for the design of the levees and the eye walls overestimated the soil strength, meaning the soil strength used in the design calculations was greater than what actually existed under and near the levees. Water pouring over levee walls topped and scored the backside of the foundations, possibly destroying the integrity of the walls. The extra water from Katrina adds pressure on the levee walls and ground. The weakened soil and water pressure pushes the wall, eventually causing it to collapse. The levee walls moved 30 feet in some cases. Here we see a diagram from the Army Corps of Engineers. This shows the levee system before Hurricane Katrina. The levee was 13.5 foot and the sheet pile underneath was 12.5 foot. This picture shows the plan for repairs of the levee system. Number one, a concrete armoring to prevent erosion. Number two, splash pad to prevent the scoring caused by water overtopping the levee wall. At three, you see the sheet pile, which would be 34 feet longer. This would provide more stability and better seepage control. At four, you see the H pile. This is for enhanced stability. And five, you'll see the L wall, which is 1.5 foot higher in elevation. The federal government has spent $15 billion trying to fix what went wrong in New Orleans with the levee system. But in spite of all the construction, some critics are still asking serious questions about how safe it is to live in New Orleans. 